There's smoke in the building, and everyone is looking around and wondering why the fire alarms aren't sounding. Is this deja vu? Asset backed securities are getting crushed during another economic downturn. Mortgage rates are going through the roof, causing another possible housing bubble to pop. Consumers are getting laid off and defaulting on their debt. And finally, another indicator that the building is about to burst into flames is how the US auto industry is mimicking trends from the global financial crisis. Is this 2008 all over again? Over the past years, the auto industry has been pushing auto loans on millions of Americans, struggling to keep up with their bills. That's especially been the case for consumers with subprime credit, as the average credit score rose 4 points since 2020, according to FICO, a data analytics company focused on credit scoring services. For many years now, these loans have been making up an increasing percentage of the market, loans that many people should not be taking out, especially with a looming mortgage collapse. These are loans that will sooner or later force credit delinquency. Something like the car loan bubble we're seeing today. It's not just consumers that are panicking, but automakers and dealers are beginning to sweat. Sales have taken a sharp dip as stalling production line persists due to a shortage of chips, semiconductors, raw materials, and employees. Stack that with a pandemic that just about froze assembly and manufacturing, these conditions are the perfect storm for another economic downturn. If that isn't making you feel nostalgic for the Great Recession of 2008, take a look at this. These are the same long-term economic trends that chopped away at the middle class and decreased the purchasing power of the average American. In the last two years, a lot of wealth was transferred to the top 1% as poverty rates in the United States increased at a worrying pace. Americans are living in a first world country, yet an alarming percentage of citizens are more worried about hunger and homelessness than healthcare and the economy, according to the Gallup. The heartaches won't stop there. Not only is the auto industry suffering some of the worst economic waves in history, but also retail stores, pension funds, and stocks are sharing in a crash of devastating proportions. These are the early warning signs that unfortunately, our leaders in Washington haven't been paying much attention to. The same signs signaled in the global financial crisis of 2008. Looking back, many economic experts agree that the collapse in 2008 could have been averted if action had been taken sooner. The slow motion crash back then happened at such a slow pace that many people refused to sound any fire alarms and kept their guards down. Then the building burned to the ground with a lot of us left in the ashes, wondering how it all happened. That's why it's important to watch this video and follow the current financial trends like the US auto industry. These are the early warning signs that will keep you on your toes and help you prepare for any car market crash. Because if properly prepared, this crash may end up being an avoidable car accident. So be sure to like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on the latest trends in the market. Let's put the pedal to the metal and dive right in. Delinquent Auto Loans More and more, we're seeing the car industry attract a lot of attention in the headlines. It's blowing up the charts in the financial press, not so much because of the compelling innovations in electric cars and autonomous driving, but more so because for the last several months, speculation that the next financial world crisis will be tied to auto loans. Auto credit data, the world's most important key in the auto market, has shown a deterioration in recent quarters. The level of newly delinquent or overdue car payments in the US has surpassed $23 billion as new seriously delinquent loans exceed $8 billion. Those are levels not before seen since the global financial crisis marked through 2007 and 2008. That is why there's so much buzz going around these signals, because it contradicts the US consumer confidence increase, unemployment dip, and other strong credit indicators around the market. So why so much uneasiness now? What's driving the erosion in auto credit? Is this a big problem that only those in the auto industry should be worried about? Or is this a broader financial crisis? Deteriorating Subprime Auto Lending a lot of what drove the global financial crisis from 2007 to 2009 was the reckless fashion in that money was lent out. As frightening on the surface as it may appear, the weakening in subprime auto loans doesn't have the same severe implications as the housing mortgage-backed securities. Although there has been a significant deterioration in delinquency rates in subprime loans, data for higher credit borrowers appear to be normalizing. But sadly, levels remain low. Subprime auto lending and delinquency are trending, but still, only make up about a quarter of total auto lending. With $270 billion, it makes up an even tinier proportion, around 2% of the total in US consumer credit that stands at $12.6 trillion. 
Another important item to take note of is that not all lenders are having the same levels of risk. Subprime auto lending has grown, but is not being driven systemically by large banks or automotive captive finance companies, or FINCOs. The ones behind the deterioration in subprime auto loans are mostly private equity-backed NBFs or non-bank financials. NBFs make up the majority of auto lending reported in the last years and are even taking it a step further by lending money to those with exceptionally low credit scores or those without a credit score at all. Well-established lenders have been paying attention to the market and are reducing new lending by up to 25%. These banks and auto lenders will be mostly insulated in the event of an economic downturn. The ones who will most likely take the burdens will be the NFBs. Used car prices. So are we headed to an auto industry apocalypse? Is the wider financial system headed to a crash? If all you're paying attention to are the headlines, then the data on auto credit might look alarming and may be a cause for a lot of panic and stress. But according to the analysis of experts, we may be headed to some uncomfortable potholes along the road. But they're not anything that we can't swerve. The risk to both the auto industry and other financial systems seems to be on a yellow alert. However, there are a few more factors to observe and pay attention to to make sure we stay below critical. If you're looking for where the alarm should be sounded, then look at the profitability in the auto industry. For a long time, used car prices have determined the residual value of the collateral for a loan or lease. This is very important for high-quality lenders because the price of used cars in the U.S. has been falling in the last few months compared to when they hit an all-time high in December 2021. That was almost 50% more than the pre-pandemic sales of the year before. A reason for this spike was the supply constraints for new vehicles during the pandemic. We saw high demand choked out by supply chain issues and a worldwide shortage of semiconductor chips. Newer vehicles are much more sophisticated than ever before and require about 40% more microchips than their predecessors. This shortage is predicted to spill over into 2023. So what do used car prices have to do with anything? Well, considering that the increase in used car prices has had a direct impact on inflation, we'd say it has a lot to do with everything. According to the research done by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, used car prices contributed more than 1% to the 40-year high inflation. That number may seem low, but when compared to the 0% it contributed for the last 20 years, that's a number we should be paying attention to. While used car prices are still at an all-time high, according to Cox Automotive Used Vehicle Value Index, numbers declined for three consecutive months, falling from the peak of 236.3 down to 221.2. What's the overall economic impact? The market is recognizing that margins are unstably high in car company stocks as trading has dropped significantly in valuations. There may still be opportunities for investment in particular stocks, but overall, it's looking very discouraging for the auto industry. That being said, the overall impact on the broader financial and economic outlook looks to be less severe. That doesn't mean you shouldn't drive carefully and proceed with vigilance. The yellow street lights are flashing, so please proceed with caution. Be smart with your spending and pay attention to the trends before investing. So get ready, it's gonna be a bumpy ride.